What's up, YouTubers? Today, I'm going to review these four slips. Yes, you own slip joints, or you may if you're a knife, knife person. Also, if you're a nice person, you might as well. Um, but you need to put these in something. It's called a slip joint. These are slips. So the four that I'm going to be reviewing today are the MKM. Um, I don't know the name of this, if, if there is a name, but I'll be discussing this in a moment. The ones that come with the Jack Wolves, come on. You must own a Jack Wolf knife, right? If you're a knife person, or at least you've handled one. They do come with their own slips, but I'm going to go ahead and be reviewing that independently because lots of people own those knives and might have those. You never know. Um, though they're not sold individually, I, I don't think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but I don't think they are. But I am going to still evaluate the quality of that one just because there's a lot of them around. The traditional pocket knives, standard one as well, not the large one. That's the one I've been using the longest period of time. And then the Sage Grouse Leather. This is a custom one, um, obviously in the beauty category. It's going to be the winner there, so I'll just jump into that. What are going to be the four categories? Materials, function, craftsmanship, and beauty. By materials, basically I'm going to be talking about the quality of the leather. You know, the, 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 the stitching. Is it solid? Is it kind of thin? Does it look a little wimpy? Um, that sort of stuff. You know, in terms of the function, I'm going to basically put various knives in and out um, of various sizes, um, you know, different brands and that sort of thing to see how it functions. Is it easy to use? You know, get the knife out. Does the knife stick in there, etc. Um, and then as far as craftsmanship, I'm going to be looking at, you know, how well are things done? Um, you know, if the leather's dyed, is it dyed well? Stuff like that. And then the last thing is going to be the beauty. Um, again, this one is the custom it's not it's really not fair because that's in a different price class and then the last thing we'll be talking about is overall value but first let's bring in the players da, 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 da. so out go the slips we'll go ahead and move those out for just a sec and we're going to bring in the knives that i'm going to be placing inside there as kind of the test cases um actually i'm going to start small to big this is a great eastern cutlery free one of the freedoms very tiny this guy is an extremely small so we'll start on the small end there this is a boker um, and i don't know all the names of these right now i haven't done full carries and full reviews of them but that is a beauty and it's a little tiny guy as well it's small in height but not in stature and it's very thick and stout it's a dual bladed this is a rough rider and like i said i'll go ahead and flash up the names of these um, as you know I'll put them on the screen as I talk about them. This one I do know is a case sod buster. So you can kind of see we're growing in size here at this point in time. Um, we have a Jack Wolf knives. We'll order them. Um, this is the Jack Wolf Big Bro Jack. Um, then we go into what is an extremely wide knife. This is a, I think a 68 model. I don't know. Like I said, I'll look all those up and flash them on. That is a Great Eastern Cartley, quite a large knife though. And then kind of rounding out the real big boys is the Lake Champlain. Um, this particular one is the Sheep's Foot. Um, and that is, you can see, a very big and beefy knife. knife. Not quite as wide as the Great Eastern Cutlery, but pretty dang big and tall. I'll go ahead and put each of these on their side so you can kind of get, gauge the relative thickness of them. The only super wide one is really going to be that Great Eastern. This Rough Lot Rider Barlow is pretty, pretty thick as well, not quite as thick as that one. And then you have over here the Great Eastern is just extremely little thin. So, you know, those are the knives that we're going to be testing out. The MKM is very thin leather, very supple, very stretchy. You kind of see that it actually um, lightens up there, but it, and it doesn't necessarily go back. So this is one I don't use a lot. So on the materials front, oh gosh, out of five, honestly, I don't give this one really high. The stitching is very thin. This one's going to get beat up over time. The leather, like I said, I do like the supple leather. Leather, I'll give it a little extra bump for that. I'm probably going to give this one a three out of five. For the Jack Wolf, this one, what I do like about these is they have a nice little flip over. I guess that's maybe talking about function. Sorry, I'm jumping into there. Materials only here, Mitch. Materials, it's a relatively thick, good quality leather. It, uh, it you know, it has an, a, enough suppleness and stretchiness to it to get knives in and so forth. And uh, I'm going to give this one a four. 
The traditional pocket knives, aka C Risner Cutlery one, this one's a five. And this one I can just tell you because as far as the quality of the materials, this thing has survived a lot. It's lived with keys, it's lived in pockets for three years. It was my principal carry um, for pretty much all my slip joints until the Jack Wolf knives came along in just the last couple years. So yeah, this one, five. The Sage Grouse Leather, this one's obviously a five. The materials, I haven't carried this a lot because I haven't <laughs> determined which knife is gonna live in here because I do want it to kind of form to one of mine. In fact, I'll just fess up right now. Um, I'll go ahead and link up the video <laughs> that I did of this one. This is the Boker, uh, just absolutely gorgeous. Co integrated copper, integral bolsters, and then um, basically uh, stabilized wood there. Really, really beautiful. That is going to pair up with that one eventually. I just wanted to do a review on this before I start to beat it up. But yeah, the sage grouse leather materials, unquestionable, I can tell. And I've also watched his Instagram. It's a five. As for the MKM, of course, they're probably assuming you're going to be using the MKM gent um, slip joint, which is kind of a bad assumption for me. If you're going to make a, you know, a pocket sheath, as they call it, uh, I think it should be more flexible in, in that context for use. I wouldn't even try. I did try. It's This thing, you can just see it stretches the heck out of it, the Lake Champlain. So that big boy, no, no. You know, even if you go down somewhere a little bit smaller, let's go with the, the Jack Wolf. Once you utilize that knife, it's basically going to be forever owned to that knife. Because, again, this being supple, it just didn't stretch back in that sense. So you're ta really talking about, functionally speaking, the two little guys are about all you can use on this one. Um, you know, so in, in terms of that, it works fine for really small slip joints. Now, the one unique feature about this, and then let's put the, uh, the, the Great Eastern, fits in there just fine. The one thing I will say, and I'll go ahead and up kind of interlink it now but this one does have a magnet on the back here and this one is actually designed to go in fact yeah well, I'll, I'll show it in a sec but this one is designed to actually go in your pocket and be magnetized on so that it's kind of up front and it's not buried down deep in your pocket let me go ahead and demonstrate that so you can see here the idea is that it keeps your slip joint up like any other thing but it you know it holds in your pocket the big problem on this one the big problem on this one is that principally what happens is the magnet for little guys sticks to ferrous metals and you know copper is not a big deal but if you have steel nickel nickel silver bolsters nickel has fer, fer it's a ferrous and so metal and so it does have iron and therefore it sticks to um this and it's really really tough to pull out of your pocket so you have to end up pulling this slip out of your pocket anyway so as far as function this one, this one's going to get a, I'll be very generous and give it a two. For function, I'm going to give the Jack Wolf a three for the following reasons. It works perfect. It's designed for Jack Wolf knives, but I will say it, it it's sized in, in such a way that I won't say it, it accommodates only, but when you're talking about kind of real big knives, it's a real big stretch, you know, and then as far as super little knives, they're, they fit in there, but then even by folding these flaps over, it's it's kind of a, takes a little bit more effort. This thing's really designed, I believe, to just kind of uh, fit, like I said, your Jack Wolf knife with it, which is, you know, in and of itself, fantastic and can last a lifetime. Be the one and only slip joint you ever owned. They are fantastic. I um, reviewed a few of those and own many of them. So overall, though, oh, and the last thing is, is though I do love this um, flap to get to your knives um, because the, otherwise it fits pretty snug. The suede, I, I kind of wish the suede had been knocked down just a little bit. This suede actually does quite a number against your, um, basically this brushed titanium integrated bolsters. So as they go in and out, in and out, in and out, as, as I had experienced on my laid back jack, um, it does start to actually kind of wear off that surface. Not a huge deal. It's like, think of it as like a patina and showing love, but it will just start to kind of wear off that, uh, you know, that oxide coating on the titanium. So give, I'll give that a solid three. As far as the traditional pocket knives going down the, the function route, it can go all the way up to the big boy. And what I like about this one, although the, this particular knife being so huge, takes a little more effort, is it, it just has a nice pinch to it. It's got just enough suppleness to go around your knives, 
but just enough pinch to make it easy enough to get out. And it's tall enough that it kind of closes in a little bit on your condo, a little or nice. So you can go all the way to this big boy. Check that out. That's the uh, the Monster GEC. And then you, you know, this is the, the Big Bro Jack, which is one of the bigger models. And, you know, it would fall out if you, you held it upside down, but in your pocket, it's going to be nicely safe and nicely covered up. As far as the little guys, I will say this is not particularly good for the little guys. They will actually just slip slide out and fall out in your pocket. So, you know, I do give this a five just because of its functionality um, and, and being able to take an abuse. Plus, I take a look on inside on the suede. It has just enough there to give you some gription. But, but absolutely, it, it did not wear the knives down um, on the whole. I, it was just a little bit smoother, a little bit um, nicer, I should say, to the various uh, fancy surfaces, if you will. And then in terms of a, mi a mid-range knife, in this case, Sodbuster, it holds just fine. And again, you just have that nice pinch to pop that thing out. So, yeah, for me, this one, this one is the five in this category. The Sage Grouse Leather, le Sage Grouse Leather, the base-sized one, I also do like that it has a nice pinch, so it's got that nice strength to it. Um, as far as function, it's definitely not necessarily to fit the big boys. This is going to really stretch this one to its absolute limits. Does he sell bigger ones? Yeah. But if you just want a kind of one slip, um, you're definitely not going to go for big, these big monsters. It's going to literally stretch this thing to all get out. So you're talking about this one, and I did get this one. That, this was one of the knives that I wanted to specifically see how it fit. That is the Big Bro Jack. Um, so, yeah, it, really, really good. And then this one is also an absolute champion for the little guys. So you can kind of put those down in there and pinch. It's a four, almost a five, just because it can't accommodate necessarily all the sides or sizes, you know, as well. And the fact that it doesn't necessarily have kind of that pinch over top. Um, it does, once you begin to open it, it's kind of linear and starts to stretch. Um, to, so what you pretty much always have that open. Um, let me go ahead and put these side by side. You know, give them, these basically have the same fixed opening, and this one I've used in pocket for literally three years or so, um, and this one n none yet, <laughs> essentially. So I'm going to start carrying in it. But uh, yeah, that's a four is very solid on that one. As for craftsmanship, the MKM, it's okay. You know what? I, I can't complain a whole lot about it. Like I said, I think they, they treated the leather really nice. It, it's it being a very thin leather, it does maintain a good suppleness. So, you know, it, this is all, it's, it's a middle of the road. It's a three, not terrible, not amazing. Um, you know, okay, three or four. I know I got to stick to, you know, I'm going to stick to a three because a three is just fine. Um, it, it doesn't mean it's a fail. As for the Jack Wolf, it's, it's a solid three. Um, you know, it's, this is clearly probably a lot of machine work. I don't know if it's all hand done or not. Nothing wrong with this. It's a fairly simple pattern and design to do. So, you know, not fantastic. Nothing wrong with it again. Um, it fully functional, but you know, kind of just ubiquitous, uh, in terms of a shape. So a, a solid three, nothing wrong with that. For the traditional pocket knives, again, nothing wrong with it. Uh, the one thing I will say that I prefer on the craftsmanship on this one, and I, I do give it up from just a kind of a basic three, is having these little holes down here. Um, I don't know. It's not like they're water holes to run stuff out. Uh, maybe it is to provide air. I don't know. Obviously, part of it helps uh, helps the fold, but it, it just, I think it does contribute to the, 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 the pinch on this one and slipping the knife out. So for me, I give this one a four. Um, it's just, even though it's just linear lines here and then fold it over, but I just like that one. And then also kind of the beveled edges there. You can see there's clearly some, some hand elements on this one. Would that crack in time? Possibly. You can kind of see some, you know, cracking there. But so far to date, uh, after several years and lots of use, no problems. Four. The Sage Grouse Lever, Leather. What can I even say about this? This is a, this is a six out of five. Um, honestly, the craftsmanship on this is it, it, an artistry. It, it's just absolutely puts it out of the park and in a different class. That's why this is a slip that you get for a knife, you know, like this or like this, where you've invested a fair chunk of money 
and you want to basically, you know, show that, not show that money off, but show that knife off and, and give it literally a beautiful place so that when you pull this out of your pocket, people are going to look at that and say, oh my gosh, you know, and then you pull out the knife. So I think this is one that is worthy of those level of knives. Again, I can only give a five, but this is, this is literally a six. This is off the charts in terms of good quality and craftsmanship. The MCAM, as far as, you know, my next category, which is just sheer beauty, it's okay. Honestly, it's, it's, I like the fact that they thought outside the box, and, and that's a beautiful thing when you're kind of thinking of alternate ideas. Again, the fact that the magnet was to hold it in your pocket, but the magnet holds against any, nickel, uh, any ferrous metals, and so when you're trying to pull those out of your pocket, it, it essentially starts pulling this out of your pocket counts a little bit against it but you know what that's not in the beauty category in the beauty category i'm going to say this one was a four because i really do appreciate the thinking out outside the box on that as for the jack wolf kind of a plain shape i do love the coloring of it and i love the the patina that it starts to take on as you have a knife in there for a long time um, you can kind of see that and see that little silhouette so the coloring Really, I got to give the beauty a, a, a good job on that. And even though I didn't like it as much functionally, this this heavily un um, kind of knocked down suede is really beautiful. So for me, it's boy, is it is it a four? Is it a three? It's a three. It's solid. There's nothing wrong with that. For those people that think three is bad, no, it's the middle of the road and it's very solid. So yeah, I'll give the Jack Wolf a three. The C. Risner traditional pocket knives one, you know, even though it does have these kind of cut angles, those those are good, but I think those aren't enough to. This is a functional slip. This is not, you know, this is not gorgeous. So, I mean, it, it, it's gorgeous in that it holds, you know, awesome stuff in it, but it's it's kind of a fairly basic shape. Nothing wrong with it. Give it a three, um, you know. So it just and of course, <laughs> the sage grouse. We're back to sixes, huh? Yeah, there's a lot of different patterns. Um, it comes with a price. And we'll talk about the overall value next. But the Sage Grouse is, it, it's, it's a five. At $25, the MKM is it's not a bad value. I think for the function, for the quality of it, for what it's done, uh, it's, I still think it's, Again, it comes down to that function and how it actually performed when I used it in pocket and the fact that it kept, you know, lifting up with knives because the magnets stick to them. Again, it's just presuming that you're using a essentially titanium and micarta only, um, which really does deaden that magnetism a whole lot. And so for 25 bucks, eh, that's a fair price. We'll give it a three. Not terrible, not great. So Jack Wolf knives not being sold independently, the, the slips... I can't really put a value on it, but but what I will say is, is in terms of my categorization, given the fact that this is included and that this is a very middle of the road to upper middle of the road slip for me, I think at that point in time, you're talking about definitely value add to the whole knife set that you get. Um, and in that context, very, very good. So for me, this is a four value, you know, it's, it's, it's nearly perfect. Um, yeah, four. As far as the traditional pocket knife, C. Risner cutlery slip value, this is thirty. This goes for thirty dollars. It's functionally, it's great. If you, especially if you really, why I'm going to give this one a four in value is because it is above average for what you're getting and the functionality and use of this one. So honestly, it's a bit above average. It's not through the roof, but you know what? I think it's it's very good. Okay, last one. So how do you judge the value? of something that is literally you know almost four times this is a by the way this is 110 dollars so you're paying for a person's time to basically carve out this leather by hand um with using tools of course but this is really what you're paying for so the value is you know this is definitely subjective for me i i think of this in the context of you know these knives the, the jack wolf knife is 300 dollars um, this, this Boker, beautiful knife, this one was like 240 or something for a really high quality slip joint, you know, the Lake Champlain, you know, these, this knife is like $200 and, you know, same thing, GEC all the way down, you know, to $100 GEC knives and, and, and heck, you know what, you can even just throw in these $22 knives 
And so in, the con in that context, this is a really good value. In the, in the context of raw dollars, you might say, wow, $110 for this slip. You know, for myself, since I'm the one judging these, it's not going to be a five because that's, that's a hefty price. But at the same time, for the beauty that this brings out and really adds to the entire package for the, in, the, in this case, this slip joint that it's going to go with as a package, it's really good. So I do have it above a three. So I'm going to give this one a value of four. Um, and especially as I carry it through the years and, and, you know, I see this thing start to patina in my pocket, then I think, you know, it'll add, add to that value at that point in time. Cause I'll, I think about things in value in terms of cost per use. And of course this one I haven't yet used. So I'm going to be starting to use that one as I carry a little bit better slip joints. So that's the overall value. So Mitch, which of these won? You're dying to know. All right. On paper, just adding up those categories, the end, they kind of fell in line with, I guess, price in a sense, as well as, you know, the way, the way I'd lined them up. And I kind of had a suspicion it was going to be this way. But, you know, you have materials, functionality, craftsmanship, beauty, overall value, you know, where you're adding in cost. And you, it's... you. This, to some degree, in my mind, was you get what you pay for. You're going to get better quality materials and craftsmanship when you're, you know, when you're paying a little bit more for that. You're going to get thicker leathers. Leathers are going to sustain a longer period of time, you know, than thinner ones over a lifetime. So for me, you know, if somebody would say you just want one for functionality, though, I'm probably going to go ahead and say the C. Risner. Um, and go with that one, you know. So in that context, one that I'm going to probably use more than the others, it's going to be the C. Risner one. So, you know, it's it's just on the category of beauty, which you don't think a lot about of putting stuff in your pocket. So it's, you know, you, you could do the same thing with knives and so forth is, you know, is this a good value? Is, is a Coney Gary's a good value or a Chris Reeve knives when I could just get a hundred and, you know, $20 Benchmade or maybe not, maybe a hundred and, $80 spider code that does cuts just as well as just as strong as made of a super steel, etc. And, you know, so you could say it in that context as well, but there is, there is a value that goes to beauty and it's, it's not just, you know, rarity. You can get these, you can get these right now. Um, C. Risner actually sells, uh, sage grouse leather products too. So it's, it's a different class and that sort of thing. So in that, in that sense, it doesn't surprise me that the sage grouse won Functionally speaking, I'm going to still end up using the C. Risner one the most. It fits the most knives that I have. It's very flexible around them, holds them in, and I love that pinch opening. Makes for great use for from top to bottom. I will still continue to use the Jack Wolf knives for my or the Jack Wolf slips for my Jack Wolf knives. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. They, I love, like I said, how they start to you know pinch and, and, and show that patina around the blade that you put in there and that you carry and use for a long time. As far as this MKM one, I will absolutely give this away. Um, uh, probably with my next knife giveaway, I just don't use this one. This is not a product that I will ever use in the context of having these other three. Um, you know what? So look for a very soon giveaway. Um, I do have a knife in mind, and I'm just going to kind of pair it with this one because the knife itself is, I don't know, $30 or something. So you're going to get $55 worth of value. Hope, hope to see you later for that. Uh, I won't tell you what that knife will be, but it will be fairly obvious when it does get posted. So I hope this, you know, this kind of review based on my thought process was interesting, um, if not useful. And uh, hopefully it helps you make some decisions in your own world of slip joints and, and what you're going to wrap those things in before you put them in your pocket, a.k.a. the slips. So have a great day and take care.